August at around, I'd say, 2 p.m., I went to the Bethlehem Museum to check out an exhibition and talk on the two frightful statues called, well, the Brainless Brothers. It was a free talk about uh, Clipper's statues of raving and melancholy madness and the last chance to see the statues before they go out on loan. I met Colin Gale, who is um, an archive special specialist at uh, Bethlehem Museum, and he agreed to take me to some photos and listen to a talk. We had quite a few visitors to the museum, and I noticed a few buying some cards. Uh, many were intrigued at what the museum had to offer. How things have changed since the 18th century when visitors to Bethlehem, which was known as Bedlam back then, actually went to see those suffering from mental disorders. I believe they used to exhibit those poor people as some sort of slide, you know, sideshow, but now in the 21st century things have changed. People are still intrigued about mental illness, uh, but now they have statues and works of art to look at rather than people suffering from mental illness. Colin, who is actually the, um, I think he's the archive specialist who works in Bethlehem Museum, came along after five minutes and began his talk about the famous or infamous statues of the Brainless Brothers. The one on the right, um, I think on that photo, might be Melancholy, and the one on the left I think is titled Raving Madness. Colin Gale talked about how these statues at first came to be perceived by the public as frightful, but intriguing as a view into how madness can affect others, without having to be amused by looking at someone who's actually suffering from madness, or in, in another term, from mental illness. Now, the statues were made by Caris Gabriel Cliver, done from Portland Stone entitled Melancholy and Raven Madness, for the gates of the 17th century mental hospital known as Bedlam, which is now currently the Bethlehem Royal Hospital. The statues stayed on the gates till around the 18th century until they were moved from view behind closed curtains. And it was in fact Alexandra Pope who dubbed the statues as the Brainless Brothers. Now Colin talked about how Sidney Cook had commented that these statues presented a truth that was rather frightful. Perhaps that was the reason why they were put away in storage for almost 30 years until the London Guild Hall managed to display them. These statues have been loaned to the V&A Museum to Paris museums and Berlin. But I now believe they are going to Frankfurt for a while. They should, if not done already, be included in the selection of the history of the world in a hundred objects. Well, what can I say about going to the Bethlehem Museum? It was quite interesting and I learned much from the art displayed there. I guess the term madness or mental illness can be quite a controversial subject. It is noble how Bethlehem has tried to change how madness is perceived by the public, while in the 17th century the public would actually see those who are in the hospital and laugh at their suffering. Instead they view service users as people going through a difficult time um, or difficult time in their life and the public now look at their creations and often wonder to themselves what it is like to go through mental illness. We ask ourselves how well they can portray their mental illness without us having been touched by either schizophrenia, bipolar, obsessive compulsive disorder, extreme depression, anxiety and dozens and dozens more.